Up until now, you've analyzed equilibrium situations where an object either sat upon or moved across a horizontal surface. This time, we'll put a little twist into the analysis by placing the object on an inclined plane. This one is inclined at 35 degrees and it's frictionless. We'll start by placing an object upon the plane, a box that weighs 100 newtons. It's prevented from sliding down the plane by a rope. As we've done before, we'll start our analysis with a free body diagram. So first we'll go with the weight vector, which we'll label W, and now we won't need the original label. Uh, we'll still have a normal force, except this time the normal force is going to be tilted because it still has to be perpendicular to the surface. In this case, that's inclined. And finally, to prevent it from going down the plane, we add the tension force. Our goal is to find the values of the normal force and the tension. Normally, we would continue by drawing some horizontal and vertical axes and labeling them x and y. But in this case, we'll find it much more convenient to analyze the situation by rotating the axes to the same degree as the incline, in this case 35 degrees. So my new coordinate axes will look like this. In order to avoid confusion, we'll label one of the axes parallel. That axis is parallel to the plane itself. The other axis we'll label as perpendicular meaning that that axis is perpendicular to the plane. This helps us in two ways. One is that now two out of the three forces are aligned with the axes, which means we have less work to do finding components. A second is that if the object was moving, its motion would be along one of the axes. So now for the component diagram. We can start by putting in the normal force and also the tension and those are the ones that are now aligned with the new axes. But notice that the weight vector is no longer aligned with an axis. So that means we'll have to find components for the weight vector that do align with the new axes. So that means one component of the weight will be parallel to the inclined plane, so we'll label that W parallel, and the other component will be perpendicular to the plane, so we'll label that W perpendicular. You can think of these components conceptually as the parallel component of the weight representing the part of the weight that tends to make the box slide down the plane. The perpendicular component of the weight can be thought of as the part of the weight that holds the box on the plane. As expected, the two components establish a rectangle of which the weight vector is the resultant. A little geometry shows that this angle is the same as the angle of incline. The fact that the bottom of the rectangle is also equal to W parallel allows us to calculate the values of W parallel and W perpendicular. A little trigonometry, which you should check for yourself, tells us that the parallel component of the weight is equal to the whole weight times the sine of the angle of incline. And W perpendicular is equal to W times the cosine of theta. So now we can add these two components to our component diagram. Since the box is at rest and in equilibrium, we can state that all of the forces acting upon it must be balanced. In other words, the net force is equal to zero. And the only way that that can be true is if the net force in both the parallel and perpendicular directions are also equal to zero. Now for the all-important force equations. In the parallel direction, we have T being a positive force and W parallel is negative. And in the perpendicular direction, we have the normal force positive and the W perpendicular as negative. It should be evident from the component diagram and the equations that the rope only has to support part of the weight of the box. Also, the normal force only has to balance part of the weight, not the entire weight as it would if the box was on a horizontal surface. Now if we want to solve for the tension, we'll go over to the parallel equations and solve for tension. After that, we'll use the trigonometric relation that we found above to substitute for W parallel and call it W sine theta. Now we just have to put the numbers in 
and complete the calculation and we get our answer for the tension 57.4 newtons. Likewise, we can solve for the normal force and then make the trigonometric substitution, plug in our numbers and do the calculation and we get our normal force as 81.9 newtons. Let's change things up by cutting the rope. For that to work, we're going to have to give the plane some friction. Then we'll have to add a friction vector that replaces the tension vector. Pause the video for a moment and see if you can figure out what the friction force is without doing any calculations. If you said 57.4 newtons, you were right. If you didn't get it, how would you have figured that out? Consider the original situation. The only difference is that the tension from the rope is being replaced by a friction force. So likewise, on the component diagram, we'll replace the tension force with a friction force. And the whole rest of the analysis is the same. So every place that I have a tension, I'll replace it with F for friction. And thus, the friction force is 57.4 newtons. And I don't have to do anything to find the normal force because that's exactly the same. It's still 81.9 newtons. And there you have it, an analysis with a twist.